I'm going to go into my PayPal account and I'm going to click on reports. Then I'm going to click on uh, activity download. Then I'm going to click on completed payments. Then I'm going to select my day range. Let's say I want to bring January 1st of 2017 through December 31st of 2017. I'm going to click OK. Then I'm going to click on customize report fields. I'm going to uncheck anything that's checked in there because we don't need any extra fields. We're just going to leave the default fields. That's actually enough. We only need three things, date, payee, and amount. So we don't need any of that extra stuff. Then we click on create report. Then you're going to wait five to 10 minutes usually, and it will show up in your activity report list. So I already had done this before the video and it took about 10 minutes. So I'm going to click on download. I'm going to open up the CSV file to download it. And there it is. There's my CSV file. Let me make this a little bit bigger so you can see it clearly. So these are all my transactions from January 1st to December 31st. One of the existential problems with the PayPal download is that it brings in the gross amount and the fee as two separate columns. And this is not going to work uh, really well unless I do uh, two downloads. And this is kind of a tricky process. I'm going to show you how that works. But we should also get rid of anything that's a pending transaction. So I'm going to select all these columns here. And I'm going to click on Data Filter. And I'm going to get rid of the pending transactions. I really just want the completed ones. The second filter I'm going to run is here under Type. I'm going to get rid of a reversal of General Hold. And anything else that has the word hold in it or temporary or pending or something like that. Now, I have to make a quick disclaimer here. Uh, let me zoom this in again so you can see it. This stuff is really, really personal. Every single time you're dealing with PayPal, everybody's PayPal file looks different. Everybody's circumstances looks different. The way these transactions look, the nature of the transactions, they're all existentially different. So there's a big challenge on trying to make one video that will pertain to every single person's PayPal account. And this is for uh, the historical downloads. For the 90-day download that I showed you earlier, that's easy. That's cakewalk. For this, it gets extremely, extremely uh, tricky. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this data after I did my filtering. And I'm going to create a new And I'm going to create a brand new spreadsheet, paste that in there. And these are the stuff, these are the things that I want to download. So I'm going to save these. Let me save it into my desktop somewhere. And I'll call it uh, PayPal 2017. Make it a CSV file, it's typically the best choice. Click on Save. So as I mentioned, there's only three columns that we need. We need the date. We need the payee, which is usually this one under name. And we need uh, the amount, but we're going to download it in two passes. First, we're going to download uh, the gross, and then we're going to download the fees. Okay, but when we download the fees, we may have to uh, change this a little bit um, because we wanted to just say PayPal fee. So usually, what I do is I'll create one more column here at the end. I'll just call it fee name, and then I'll call this one. PayPal fees. This is going to make sense, trust me, but you just have to pay attention for, uh, for now and follow this process. So I'm just creating another column called uh, PayPal fees because when I download this spreadsheet into QuickBooks for the second time, I'm going to pick this to be the payee instead of um, this to be the payee. I'm also going to get rid of all the ones that are zero so we don't, don't download those. So we're going to go in two steps and kind of see how that works. Let me save that spreadsheet. Okay, then I'm going to click on the drop down for update. I'm going to click on file upload, select browse, select my PayPal spreadsheet, click on open, click on next. 
Then I'm gonna bring this into my PayPal account. Click on next. So my date will match my date column, perfect. My description in this case will be my name column and my amount is going to be the gross amount. Then it says, is the, is the values coming in in two columns, positive or negatives? No, they're coming in in a single column. Then I'll click on next. There's all my transactions. It's a whole year's worth of transactions. Click on next. Yes. Then I'll click on let's go. And now I have hundreds of transactions in PayPal. I have a whole year's worth. But notice or remember that the PayPal fee in this case is not coming in. So I have to bring it in on a second pass. Okay, so I want to go back into my spreadsheet. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run another filter here, data filter, and I'm going to filter out anything that under the fee column is zero. So I'm going to get rid of that. Perfect. And then at this point, I can just delete what I don't need. So I don't need any of these things. And I don't need any of these things except for fee name. So now I'm down to date, fee amount, and fee name. I can now copy these create a new spreadsheet, paste that into my new spreadsheet, and save this as, I'm gonna call this one PayPal Fees 2017. So all these would download simply as PayPal Fees. Go back into QuickBooks, Browse, that should work now. Click on next, select my PayPal bank account, click on next. And we got description in this case will now be fee name and the amount would be column fee. And then click on next. And then all my fees are downloaded. Click on next and yes. Let's go. And then we go back and follow the same process as I was showing before to enter the expenses, the deposits, and uh, all your fees. So we should have all these fees uh, coming in. Now, if you actually notice that this one's called PayPal fees um, as a description. So if we were, were to follow the same process with uh, manage rules, we can actually go to the edit this rule and then we can add, we can change this to be any condition. We can add a line and we can say, if it says fee amount or PayPal fees, go ahead and reclassify it. We'll click on save, and then we should see, like magic, all of my PayPal fees automatically recognized. Look at that, all my PayPal fees are being recognized. So I think that the bank feeds feature is absolutely fantastic. I think that a lot of folks don't like it because they don't understand it, but once you actually see it work like this, I think it works like magic. So in many cases, I don't feel any need to use any other tool other than the bank feeds feature. I think this is the best way to, to work it, especially because it's, it's congruent with all your other processes of working with banking.